Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back. This is Xanthus with Xanthus Gaming. Today we're going to be looking at some base designs in 7 Days to Die. These base designs will help you get started in your first 7 days of the game and will also help you further than that. In fact, most of these bases will last all the way up until the 21st day or even beyond. And if you upgrade them to concrete, they should last you the full 49 days. I hope you enjoy this video and many of these designs were created by other people. In the description below there's credits to anyone that I could find the video for. So uh, some of these have just been community creations for quite a while. So without further ado let's go ahead and just get started here guys. Alright this base I want to show you guys is very simple if you're just getting started out in the game and you don't know what to do this is a great way to spend your first 7 day horde and even up as far as like the 14 or 21 day hordes as well. All you have to do is find a sturdy prefab, preferably something with cement, though this is a clay based thing so it's kind of like cobblestone. Something with cement's a little bit better. Police stations, military, or not military bases, uh, nuclear bases, things like that. And all you have to do is place frames around the outside. Now I like the steel frame or the uh, scrap, scrap frames uh, because I think it's easier for me to see through, to shoot through, and just because the iron is easier for me to come by than wood, especially early on in the game. It used to be that wood was super easy to come by early on, but now in Alpha 16, wood is very limited early on in the game. So instead of using wood frames all the way around, I use scrap frames all the way around. Now, if you want to get a little bit fancy from that, you can now also add little spider legs or little outlets that allow you to kite the mobs around a little bit easier, get them away from the walls and take shots at them, and that's kind of what we have going on here. How you get up here is quite easy. You just make a little jump puzzle here. Zombies can't do it, you can. Boom, you're there. Okay? Horde comes, you kite them around the outside, you know, you move them around so they don't destroy all the walls and you just shoot down at them from here. This is actually interesting because it is lootable from up here as well. So if we spawn in a zombie, let's spawn in a Darlene, why not? And we kill her, she should be lootable from up here. She might be a little bit far away, but I think she'll still be lootable. So all you have to do is loot her, see, and you can get get the loot from her all the way up here. Now, how high did I go? I went up one, two, three, four, five blocks. If a zombie cop were to explode, it would decimate this defense. You might even be able to go a couple blocks higher and then that would stop the zombie cop explosions, but his spit will still mess things up pretty bad. Luckily, you shouldn't have to worry about zombie cops until day 21 plus, depending on your game stage. These next two bases are actually pretty resource intensive and will actually require the use of a forge in order to make them. In order to make the materials you need for it, you need iron bars, which require an anvil and a forge. You also have to burn down the metal into the forge. Once you've done that though, you can make this little platform that you can jump up onto and fight the horde from up here. Now notice that I do leave gaps in here so that you can loot the bodies which is pretty important in my opinion. But all you have to do is stand up here and shoot down at those poor zombies and they are toast. Uh, the downside to this is it's not too entertaining for me because I don't like to just shoot, I like to melee too. So this design is not particularly for me, but it was very, very popular for a very, very long time. It's a classic with a slight modification. We put in 50 pillars to help hold it up just because the 50 cobblestone pillars are pretty cheap to make and we're already using a massive amount of iron for all the spikes. Here is a iron variant where you can just use iron blocks instead. Now you could also replace these iron bars with scrap iron frames as well and that would work too but they don't have the carry capacity that the iron bars do. So you can get away with a little bit less support with the iron bars and this is actually with some redundancies in here. If the zombies were to take out some poles, we're actually not going to have it fall on us. If we take out the center one, it might. No, even then it won't. They're gonna have to take out at least two full poles before it's going to fall on us. 
And we can still stand in the middle and everything. So, that's kind of nice because they will be attacking that area. Now, with the 50 poles, they're less likely to actually take them out when they're spread apart like this. They have some trouble actually hitting those sometimes. So, pretty safe supports there. If you decide to go with the metal route instead, it's the same thing. It just costs a whole lot more metal. Check out the tooltip down below and you'll see the resource cost comparison. But that's the basic idea behind the platform defense base. You just throw up some pillars, you throw up some frames or some iron bars on top of those pillars, and you just shoot down at them, and it's easy street. Uh, the downside to this is if a zombie blows up and it takes out more than one pillar, or it takes out the bars you're on, it's going to wreck your day. Um, so to counteract that, I suppose you could probably go up a few more squares, but then you can't loot the zombies. So kind of some cons to this build. All right, this build is one of my new favorites. It m kind of uh, simulates the arrow slits that the fun pimps put into the game, but it actually does it quite a bit better. If you have a look at the arrow slits and you try to use those, if anyone's actually tried to use those, it is a disaster. You put them down and you're like, oh, this is gonna be fantastic, no problem. We're gonna be able to shoot zombies out of it. It's gonna be great. And then you get in there and you can barely see to shoot anything. It kind of defeats the purpose of an arrow slit, right? Well, the nice thing is with this base, it takes that same idea and it just gives you a bit better of a view when you're inside there. So let's just go on in. And as you can see, you have a very wide range of view from within the base here. And the zombies cannot make it through these pillars. I have tested it with every zombie type. They cannot make it through. Crawlers can't, screamers can't, uh, cops obviously can't, dogs can't, wolves can't. You are safe from all of those things. Uh, in fact, let's just spawn in a wolf or something here. Uh, zombie dog, sure, why not? He's not even gonna look at us. Look at this little jerk. Up oh, there he goes. Now, something it should be noted is if you do stand too close, he can hit you. Notice the blood? He is hitting me right now. So you do have to stand back just a little bit as you smash him in the head with your weapon. But still pretty good. You can also snipe things from a distance with this build, which is pretty nice. And with a ladder, all you have to do is put a ladder right there. And then you can climb up top. And you could snipe things from up here as well and shoot down if that is your style. Or have it be like a little sniper perch that you can shoot from. All good stuff, all good stuff. So I really enjoy this build. Now, if you have the metal for it, I would recommend going full metal on this upgrade path uh, because it will be stronger than the cobblestone counterpart. If you look here, it's a thousand on the first layer and a thousand on the second layer as well. Versus the cobblestone is just a straight 1500 and then once that breaks, it's done. So iron is actually better in this alpha than cobblestone is. The limitation is there's not not every block exists in cobblestone. This particular base can be built in full iron though. On the outside you'll notice that we have spikes recessed in the ground so that the zombies take damage as they run in. We lay them upside down like this so they're not bobbing around, they're just staying still while they're on top of them. It's really really awesome. You could even put another layer around the outside. The cost factored in the tooltip below though does not factor in a second layer of spikes that is factoring in one layer of spikes. If you are not rich on the iron, but you have plenty of cobblestone, you could do this variant. But like I said, it's just a little bit weaker. It's 1500 durability versus 2000 durability. Same idea though. You have the little arrow slits you can shoot out of, and then you have the spikes that face down. Oop. You have the little spikes that you can face down and uh, zombies take damage as they're inside of there. I have to do a little underground hatch to get into this base. Just dig it out over there and come straight in. And then you have your little ladder if you want to be on top and shoot down, same kind of thing. So I really like this base. I think I'll be using it a little bit more in my Let's Plays from here on. It seems very, very, very simple to set up. Um, and I think it'll be pretty effective. In order to set it up, all you do is you put down a layer of blocks on the bottom. Then on the corners, you put in these poles. And then every third block, one two, three, you put in another set of poles. One, two, three, you put in another set of poles. And then, 
these ramps are actually on top of these spikes, not on top of your cobblestone centerpiece here. See how they're not on top of that? If you put them on top of your cobblestone centerpiece, you're gonna have problems. You wanna put them one space off of that on top of the spikes. So that is that particular build. I call it the octagon because it's got eight sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight sides, the octagon. Now, I got the design originally from another YouTuber who broadcast this design more than a year ago, but his, his design was slightly different. I made some modifications to make it more efficient and make it easily buildable in the first seven days. Um, and also make it a little bit more consistent because some of it, part of his build had some inconsistencies. So we modified it a bit. There is a source in the uh, description down below though if you want to see his build. He's quite a bit further along. He's in full concrete and stuff, but his design is slightly different as well. So that about does it for that particular build. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, this next one is a Grand Spartan original. Uh, there is a source in the description down below. You can check out his video where he explains all about it and he demonstrates it against the horde. But the basic idea is you have an elevated platform here, your zombies spawn in, you jump across the barbed wire, you shoot at them, you hit them, you get a little close, you whack them with your melee club, and then you kite them to the next barbed wire section, you shoot at them, you whack them, you kite them around, you keep them rounded up in your barbed wire section, maybe have them pull out here, get run in again, then you kite around, and you run back in, and you jump back to your center platform, and so on and so forth. And it's the same thing, this one is a 2x2 two two in the center, and then this one is just the 3x3 three three in the center, so it's a little bit bigger, takes a little bit more, more resources. Um, this is a very, very active style defense. The only damage you're getting from your traps is your barbed wire, which has a couple advantages. One, you get most of the kills, so you get a good chunk more experience. However, with Alpha 16 reducing the amount of experience per zombie, I don't know if it's necessarily worth it. The other downside is you have to be very wary of, zo of co zombie cop spit. Um, you just have to straight up dodge it. And you have to be very careful when you're doing your jumping and kiting around that you don't get nicked by a zombie. Um, this is a very active playstyle. I would not recommend it for new players. It is very simple to set up. It's very, very resource uh, efficient, um, but it's going to be a little bit hard for new players. Though the fact that the wood is so expensive, expensive and rare in Alpha 16, you might consider instead of using wood here, using cobblestone to set up this jump uh, area, and that might be a bit more efficient because cobblestone seems a bit easier to get right now in Alpha 16 than wood is especially for like mass building but this is a jump trap design from grand spartan again the description down below will have a link to his video with the original idea you guys can check it out here his ex explanation as well but this is the next base and i think it's pretty fun especially if you're pretty familiar with the base but again if you're a new player i wouldn't mess with this one this one's a little bit rough his next uh the next design though is a lot better Alright, this next one I have lovingly named the Spartan because the first person I saw using it was once again Grand Spartan using 50 pillars. Uh, we did make some modifications however, instead of having just one layer of 50 pillars we have two. And the reasons, reason for that is when the zombies get up here and they start trying to kill you and they're swinging away, if you only have one layer of pillars they can actually hit you. But if you have two layers of pillars, they cannot hit you at all, but you can hit them which is pretty nice. It also gives you a second layer of defense. So say they break through right here, and they're like, oh God, I'm about to die. They've broken through. Oh no, what am I gonna do? Oh God, he broke through here. He's standing on top of this column here and he's gonna kill me. Well, he's got another layer. He's gotta go through still before he can get to you. So that's kind of a nice redundancy that's built in there. Uh, you got upside down spikes, that's another modification I made from his original build so that you're not bouncing around as much, they're just standing flat and they're easier to melee and easier to shoot. I have uh, scrap frame ramps up here to shoot down from, so if you want to do the shooting down thing, oops there goes my steel pickaxe, if you want to do the shooting down thing you can stand up here and just shoot down as well. It's available right away in the game, you don't need a forge or anything. All of this is buildable without forge. In fact, all of these spaces are buildable without forge and other than the two platform defenses. When you're inside here, you just melee out at them and you get 
get the kills. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Very simple, very effective base. Uh, would highly recommend it for new players. It's not too hard to set up resource wise. It's pretty low, pretty low cost. This is one of my go-to bases for my first seven day horde. It usually lasts me all the way up until the 21 day horde and then I move on to a bigger, better base. At the By the time you get to 21 day horde, they can break through the cobblestone. But if you really want to, you can just upgrade this to cement and you're pretty much set. In fact, most of my bases use this double pillar design in cement. Um, I usually use fall traps in combination with it, which we'll talk about on the next base. But this is, this is very simple, very efficient, very eloquent base defense that is just a classic. A lot of people like it. Um, there are some other options if you don't like the 50 pillars, but this one is a classic for a reason. It's real good. The next base I have named X marks the spot for obvious reasons. It looks like an X up above. It is using the 50 pillar design from the Grand Spartan or from the Spartan base and it's incorporating it into a fall trap type idea with some outside traps. So basically the idea is you're down below ground here. Um, let's, uh, let's go and get down there real quick so we can kind of show you. I have uh, an access bay in one of these towers. There it is. Um, you just come down here and you would actually have to build an access bay to this tower as well or just a ladder or something but you're down here you have your double pillar defense you have your spikes in the center there that the zombies fall into and you're able to just kill them quite easily this is also a nice setup because with the new electric traps that are put into a game you can embed them in the walls and they can shoot out there you can put electric fence posts here and string it across i'm doing that in my let's play right now it's super effective and this is a base that will last you the full 49 days, especially if you upgrade to concrete and steel. Um, you're going to need some sort of turrets or some electric traps, though, to deal with the zombie cops so that they die before they explode. And you're going to need guns for that as well. To help thin out the herd, however, before the zombies get down here, we have some interesting ideas up above that sets it a little bit apart from the regular Spartan. Now, the reason we have this weird X structure is it's a funnel system. No matter where the zombies run here, they're going to clip into the wall and they're going to funnel through here. And because these are actually ramps placed si diagonally, the zombies think they're whole blocks, but they're actually not. See how that's a, these are just ramps positioned in a way that there's a hole in the center. So they actually think there's a floor here when there's not, and they'll pass straight onto it quite easily and just fall down into the death trap. On occasion, they will get caught in this little recess here, but as you're moving around, they should naturally fall down. It'll actually help stagger the zombies entrance into your base, so they'll be a little bit easier to deal with. We also have spikes on the outside that they have to walk across before they fall down the fall pit onto the spikes down below. The nice thing about this is later on you can make an access tunnel by simply digging up and putting one fourth pillars underneath it and then while you're down there you can also repair your spikes up here and you can repair your spikes in there from outside of your pillars. You should be able to loop all the bodies because it's small enough that you can get to all the bodies, break up all the gore blocks, and repair all the spikes while being able to turn around and repair the outside spikes as well. This also has the advantage of being able to allow you to place electrical traps out here if you want, turrets out here if you want. There's lots of different things you can do with it. Uh, you can also, from up here, you can make this into like a pseudo sniper tower and you can snipe down at them. In fact, you could extend these up a little bit, a bit and make it a real sniper tower or extend the center pillar up a little bit and make it a sniper tower all kinds of different things you can do with this. Uh, I really enjoy this base design. It's a modification of one I did in Alpha 13, um, right back when people were first discovering the pillars. Um, I think it's very effective. I was using campfires at the time to light the zombies on fire before they fell through, but that was before I knew the campfires brought in screen reports. So, still a fun base design. It is pretty resource intensive. I don't know if I would recommend it for someone first starting, but you don't have to build it up fully. You can just get two layers or three layers of this going and then they'll funnel in. And I've actually had this base up and running completely by the seven day horde a number of times. So it is definitely doable. You have to focus a little bit more on your building than you do with the other bases though for this. But this particular base will scale for a long time until the late game. 
And if you really want to put in some time, you can dig it down to bedrock and that can take tons of fall damage, but then you can't repair the outside spikes as easily. You'll, have, you'll need an access tunnel, um, but still, still a viable way to do it. All right, this next one is a modification on the Toothy, and you'll see that we're using the same funnel design that we do in X marks the spot to funnel in zombies. The traditional Toothy base just has a pillar here or a single square, and the problem with that is they tend to gather around the outsides and then you can't kill them or they'll get stuck, or if you do kill them, they'll glitch into the world and their body will disappear. This funnel design will prevent that from happening and they'll automatically filter up to where you want them and you'll be able to loot them once you, once you kill them. If you're not familiar with how to build the toothy design, super super easy. You use wedge tips on the bottom and then you do cobblestone poles right above that. Make sure you don't do cobblestone pole centered, it will mess it up. Cobblestone poles on the bottom left rotation. See how this is centered? It wouldn't work. It would be too high and zombies would get through and you'd have a weird gap and it just it just doesn't it doesn't work team trust me on this one but if you do the regular cobblestone pole then it works you have to make sure you have advanced rotations and you drop it down to the back side like that and then you just place them in there now let's just get rid of one of those and i'll show you real quick Okay, so it just goes right in there. Right on top of it, you just put a vertical version and it has to be aligned to the back side of the square as well. See, just like that. And it just goes, pops straight in there, goes straight across. Make sure you do these vertical poles before you do the roof, otherwise the roof will collapse. And then you just put a roof in and it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Entrance and exit from the base is super easy. You just jump over your spikes and you're in. And when you're getting out, I just jump up onto here and I go onto the wedge tip and then I jump over the spikes. Easy in, easy out. Very effective base. You can melee out, kill them super easily there. The crawlers, you just kneel down and you melee them. Uh, super effective. You can also shoot out. Has a very nice line of sight, just like the uh, octagon does. Very good line of sight for shooting out of. It's a very effective base and definitely something you can get up and running by day seven, if not by day like three or four. So, love this particular base design. It's really good. Uh, lots of Let's Play personalities use variations of this. The other thing is you can customize it to your liking. You can build it into a hillside. You can make it part of a fall trap. You can make it the bottom of a fall trap. You can build it on the street in a simple four by four. You can add it to an existing structure's entranceway. All kinds of interesting things you can do with this toothy design. I really enjoy it. I hope you guys like it as well. I know a lot of people have seen it before but weren't really sure how to build it. So hopefully this helps out just a little bit on it. It's actually really simple. Just wedge tips on the bottom, cobblestone poles there, cobblestone poles there, cobblestone frames there. And then we use the same diagonal filter type thing as we do on X marks the spot. To make the diagonal filter super simple, just lay down two squares, just like that, and then you do your frames. Oops, I just missed the rotation there. You do your frames on the inside, and it's good to go, so to speak. Simple rotations make it easier to find that right frame also here. Actually, I think you have to have advanced rotations on it, I just lied to you. There you go, and then that's that's your funnel right there. Boom. Alright, this next one I call the Jaws of Death. Uh, it's got a basically six layers of spikes, five layers of spikes that do damage to you. Now this is a little excessive for day seven, honestly, um, but it is upgradable to concrete and it is effective. Uh, so what happens is the zombies start wandering in here and these spikes because they're facing up will make the zombies start trying to jump up on top of them and as they jump up on top of them they'll be jumping into these top frames here and taking damage from them also if any of them pile up they'll take damage from these top top spikes up here after they get through that they'll move down into this area and this is where like your kind of piled up zombies will start filtering in and as they are stacked on top of each other and start running into these spikes, they take damage from just touching the face of the spike. They don't have to touch the tip to take damage, just touching the face of it and they take damage. And then once they finally get in here, it's kind of a toothy type design, but instead of having poles upside down, 
you have spikes upside down. So now they're taking damage from the spikes as they're running into them, but they're also attacking them. So you gotta keep them repaired up. In fact, you probably want them upgraded to a second level. But if you do, they actually have a higher durability than the poles do on Toothy. The thing is, they're gonna hit them more often, so you have to keep on top of those repairs. But they're gonna be taking damage from the spikes below and from the spikes in front of them. And if they're piled up enough, the zombies who are piled on top of each other will be taking damage from the spikes up above. So no matter where they're at, they're basically taking at least two sources of spike damage and you can still melee them. As you can see, I just hit that cobblestone block. You can still melee them from inside there. Now you do get access through a dug tunnel underneath. Uh, let's just go in there the cheating way though. And you can kind of see from inside here, same kind of thing, you just smack them. I can hit on the outside there quite easily. All right guys, so that is all of the base builds that we have today. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you like, favorite, share, and most of all, you subscribe. If you have any other ideas that you'd like to see featured in a future base design video, please link them in the comments down below, and we might end up making another one if enough ideas get submitted. Either way, I want to say thank you so much for spending some time with us today, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye, YouTubes.